Hey guys, Will here, welcome back to the channel. So today we're gonna to be checking out BJ Sim Racing's new hydraulic GT series pedal set for sim racing. Now I'm excited to take a look at these today because these are actually the cheapest by far hydraulic pedal set that we've had a look at yet on the channel. And while we've seen some products that have been quite exciting in terms of their presentation and the way they drive, I'm really excited to see what we get from a set that costs a lot less and whether we can get a similar kind of driving experience overall from something like this. So we're gonna be going through this in detail today. We'll take you through all the hardware as well as the driving experience and hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a good idea of whether this is the pedal set for you. So just before we get started for complete transparency, Pagnan Imports here in Australia who are the distributor have sent these over for us to check out very kindly. And we do have an affiliate link down in the description below as well as a discount code for you guys as well to save 5% if you do decide to pick these up. If you are looking at purchasing internationally, we'll put a link down to BJ Sim Racing's website as well in the description for you guys. But with that said, let's get started on this review. Okay, so there's a couple of different models available in the range here. We have the top hydraulic model here, which comes in at 1,749 Australian dollars. That includes shipping as well, if you purchase from Pagnan. The load cell version of these pedals comes with exactly the same throttle and clutch, just obviously a different brake pedal, and that comes in at a much lower 1,049 Australian dollars, again, including shipping. So at around the $1,700 mark, these do come in at around about the same price as a set of Husing Velt Ultimate pedals, for example, which do share quite a few design elements, as you guys can see, between these, obviously these being hydraulic and the HE Ultimates being uh, being load cell. Now I do have extensive experience with HE Ultimates. I did actually own a set of those for a good year, year and a half, which I purchased secondhand and was actually running as my daily driver pedal set for quite some time. So it's gonna be really interesting to see how these stack up against those in particular. I think a lot of people are probably wondering, is it worth going hydraulic or do you really just not really need it? So I'm just gonna set the pedals aside for a moment here because I also wanna show you this extremely heavy pedal mounting plate that comes included in the price from Pagnia. Now, on the BJ website, it does say that this is an optional accessory. Uh, so just check to make sure that you are getting this if you need it or not including it if you don't need it. So this is eight millimeter thick steel, which is powder coated, and it is a little bit flaky. I can see in a couple of little areas there where the powder coating quality isn't fantastic. And again, we were expecting to see some little corners and things like that cut to save costs here. So that doesn't surprise me at all. It's not up to the same standard, which we've seen with some other products, but again, you know, if you're just after something that's purely function over form, then I think this is perfectly acceptable. So it's certainly not a, you know, not a complaint or anything like that. It's just, you know, something that I did feel the need to point out to you guys. But we've got standard sort of M6 cutouts here, which we can then mount our pedals on. So you can see they can move around in any position. We've got 23 millimeter wide cutouts here for our M6 bolts on the pedals. So we can slide them forward and back. We've got multiple cutouts as well. So you get the idea here. There's plenty of solutions available for mounting the pedals in pretty much any position on this pedal plate, forward and back, left and right to your heart's content. Of course, if you're going for a two pedal set as well, just a throttle and a brake, you can do that as well. Now, one thing I did want to mention about this, you can see there's some little cutouts here for mounting onto your rig. And the way this works is we've got these little threaded studs, which basically go through from the bottom side. So they slide through like that. Now, the reason why I wanted to draw attention to this is simply because there's no countersinking in the bottom of this pedal plate, which means if you're trying to mount this directly to a flat surface, like say this table, for example, you are gonna run into issues with it not being able to sit flat because those studs do poke out a little bit. So if you're using a cockpit like a Simlabs P1X, for example, you are gonna have to come up with some sort of solution which allows you to mount this to your profile without those little studs getting in the way. So that's one thing I would like to see them do is maybe, I guess, have some sort of a cutout, maybe a wider slot here as well, in addition to the cutouts, just to fit these in so they can sit flush against the bottom and not protrude outwards. So that's one little improvement I think they could make there, but otherwise a very solid pedal plate. I can't imagine this is gonna be a weak spot for anybody just simply due to its heft in general. So basically what happens is the stud goes through, goes through the pedal as well, and then our little cap nuts here just screw down on top secure them in place. So very simple. And all the nuts and bolts that you need to get it mounted are all included in the kit as well. So we'll set all of those aside for now. And let's get back to these pedals. So 
I think we'll I think we'll actually start off with the brake pedal first because that's the most interesting here. And then we'll move across to the throttle and clutch. But you can see there are quite a few components here which are actually shared between the three pedals and obviously that's done to keep costs down as well. Now that does create one little issue when it comes to the hydraulic brake which we'll look at in just a moment. But in general, you know, nice pressed steel here. One thing I will mention is that there's no sort of chamfering or anything on the edges. So they are quite sharp being pressed metal rather than CNC machine. And that's again, one little thing that I noticed quality wise when you compare these to something like the Husingvelt Ultimates, which look quite similar on camera, but when you actually get up close and have a look at them, they are quite a lot smoother in their construction. And particularly in the case of the pedal plates themselves where our foot makes contact, these edges are actually quite sharp. They're not going to cut you unless you were to, you know, fall over and land on it or something. But you, know, you can hear just as I scrape my hand against it, it's, you know, quite a sharp scrape there that's happening. So I would imagine these probably aren't going to be pedals that you're going to want to use with bare feet or with socks. And if you are using boots and heeling and towing, you're probably going to end up cutting up your boots on the side as well, depending on your technique. That's something that we have had problems before with other pedals, but these are definitely the sharpest ones that I've tried to date. So, I mean, that could be easily rectified. You can just run a file over it, but it is something that I've fed back to them. And hopefully it's something that they'll be able to improve about the design. It just comes down to the fact that they're using pressed material rather than seeing and see machine material. So the edges are just a little bit less precise and a little bit less smooth than we would find on some other more expensive pedals. So let's set the clutch and the throttle aside for now and let's hone in a little bit more on this hydraulic brake pedal. So let's start off by having a look at the mechanical construction here. We'll go through how everything works and then we'll move on into adjustments because a lot of the adjustments that we have on the brake are actually uniform between all three pedals. So it kind of will make more sense if we pull everything together that way. So the pedal itself is hinging on a little self lubricating bearing, which is sitting down here. So obviously rotates like so. It's a little bit hard to press, but you'll see this in more detail when we go for a drive later. That then of course actuates our push rod, which is this piece here, which pushes into our hydraulic master cylinder. That compresses the fluid throughout the entire system. We spin it around here, you'll see a little bit more clearly. We've got a little reservoir here as well for some extra hydraulic fluid so we don't ever run dry. Then the hydraulic fluid is compressed through, through our line here as well. We'll talk about the line in just a moment. Through into our slave cylinder. That then actuates the slave, which you can see there is compressing in here. Then we've got a selection of metal, rubber and elastomer springs here which allow us a nice progressive spring rate as we push in on the pedal. So that's how that all works. And if we have a look around the other side again here, you can see a little 1000 PSI pressure sensor. So as the hydraulic fluid compresses, that sensor reads the amount of pressure in the system. That then varies a voltage, which is interpreted by the SIM as the amount of brake pressure being applied. So it's important to understand it is using a pressure sensor here. So we're relaying pressure information directly into braking pressure inside the SIM, which is of course what you want. So then we have our little control module here as well. This is a little Leo Bodner USB adapter. So it takes our input from our pressure sensor, as you can see here. And then on the bottom side of this, we've got a couple of connectors as well, one for our throttle, one for our clutch, and that's a nice little 3D printed enclosure there, keeping that adapter safe. So we plug those in, then we can connect via the included USB A to B cable to the USB B plug here, and then that connects us back to our PC. So pretty simple really in its overall design, but let's just spin it around again here. There's a couple of little things that I wanna draw attention to here. So first of all, we can see this little bump stop in here. This allows us to adjust the amount of travel available in the pedal. And basically what it is, is just a little metal piece with a bit of rubber hose sitting over it to give us a nice squishy feeling without any metal to metal contact when we reach maximum deflection on the pedal, which is a nice touch. We see similar on Husingvelt pedals as well, of course. So not exactly an original design, but nonetheless, good to see that they have taken some measures to reduce the noise that these pedals make when in use. So we've got quite a bit of adjustment here, a couple of different positions you can see one two three four different spots that we can adjust this into and inside the little instruction manual that they include which I will say is very very detailed this is something that Pagnian Imports I believe have written exclusively for their customers but they've done a really good job of outlining a bunch of stuff in here but we've got four different positions here for our bump stop and that allows us to adjust between 12 degrees or 40 millimeters of travel 16 degrees and 58 millimeters of travel, 19 degrees and 70 millimeters of travel, or 23 degrees and 82 millimeters of travel. So a range there between 40 millimeters and 82 millimeters, just over double the amount of travel between the minimum and maximum settings. So that should be enough to suit pretty much anybody's needs between you know GT style driving, street car driving, and of course formula style driving where you tend to have a stiffer pedal as well. We of course then do have adjustment here on the back as well. As we mentioned before, we've got an elastomer spring here, some rubber springs and then a metal spring. So we've got a nice progressive 
spring as we push in. You can see as I push that in, the metal springs compressing first and then obviously as we push harder the rubber springs will start to compress and then our elastomer spring lasts. So that should give us a nice defined threshold point for our braking which as we know is very very important and again we'll talk about that once we go for a drive in just a bit. We can adjust our preload on the spring here as well simply by screwing in and out the little nut on the back here so if you want the pedal to feel a little bit stiffer you can achieve it that way as well. We also have a height adjustment as well this is the same across all three pedals so you can see five different positions up and down on the front and the rear. That allows us 20 millimeters of adjustment front and rear. So we can go up, we can go down to raise or lower by 20 millimeters, or we can adjust the front and the rear independently, of course, as well to adjust the overall tilt of the pedals to match the angle of your rig, of course. Now we can invert these pedals as well, although with the hydraulic pedal, it is a little bit more complicated. You have to do a couple of things to ensure that the master cylinder remains in the correct orientation. Otherwise you risk running dry, which is a bad thing, of course. So they do recommend you get in touch with them if you're wishing to invert the hydraulic brake pedal, but the other two are pretty easy. All you need to do is just rotate the pedal plate upside down and that is pretty much it you're good to go so there is one more adjustment available on the brake pedal but this is one that i wouldn't recommend you touch so i want to explain that to you now so you can see there's a four point adjustment up and down on the push rod here as well now normally the lower setting would be the softer the upper setting would be the stiffer so the higher up you have it the stiffer the pedal is to push overall so it's basically adjusting the ratio so to speak now what you might have noticed on the master cylinder here is that this is actually in a fixed position so it's bolted physically to the housing here and it's not able to rotate or float independently of the overall assembly so the push rod which is this little part here which we spoke about earlier is connected to a piston inside the hydraulic cylinder here the master cylinder and what that does is that compresses the fluid as we talked about before now it's really important that that goes straight in and out and not on an angle and that of course is going to lead to additional friction and additional wear and tear on the master cylinder and of course the piston internally so you can see here if we were to adjust that up what's going to happen is it's going to raise the angle of the push rod but the cylinder itself is not going to rotate to allow for that and there's no sort of I guess connection in here there's no sort of joint that allows it to move freely like that so I'd recommend if you do buy this hydraulic pedal don't adjust this up and down leave it in the position that it's in from factory so the pistons going in and out nice and square and that should minimize any wear and tear that we have there should be plenty of adjustment available otherwise to get this to feel the way you want it anyway but again we'll comment on that once we go for a drive in just a minute but otherwise the design does look pretty solid to me and one thing that i do want to point out to you is absolutely no play in that pedal whatsoever that is springing back into a completely solid position here. There's no slack in it, there's no dead zone whatsoever. And that is something that I can't say for any other hydraulic pedals that I've tested here on the channel to date. Every single one of them has had some sort of play or some sort of dead zone there, which is noticeable. Now, some people will find that to be a problem. Some people don't personally, it doesn't really bother me too much when I'm driving, but definitely something worth drawing attention to there. So just a couple of other quick notes on the hydraulic system before we move across to the other pedals. Firstly, hydraulic fluid or brake fluid can be extremely dangerous. It's carcinogenic, it's corrosive, it's just nasty stuff so I don't know exactly what type of fluid they're using in this but depending on the type it can be very dangerous so if you are refilling or you know handling it and getting your hands around leaked fluid or anything like that just make sure that you're wearing gloves or some sort of protection eye protection as well would be recommended you definitely don't want to be complacent when it comes to brake fluid so I just wanted to highlight that for you guys now one other thing that we have called out on other hydraulic pedals that we reviewed is the use of braided brake lines that is really important because it stops a ballooning effect what happens is when you compress the brake pedal anywhere that that pressure can escape it's going to and this is one of the upgrades that we always do on real life race cars as well braided brake lines that stop that kind of ballooning or that kind of spongy feeling in the brake pedal and often people are surprised at the amount of improvement that can make on a race car over and above even just upgraded calipers or pads or even rotors so i do think that it's important to just draw attention to the fact that this is still a braided brake line but it's not metal braiding like we've seen on some of the other more expensive hydraulic systems that we've used so this is a zec COL7 line which looking at the notes here on my little cheat sheet is a thermoplastic hose pressure is rated from 70 all the way up to 250 bar though so I would imagine this should be sufficient and it's certainly better quality than a lot of the rubber hoses that we see on you know conventional street cars and things like that so we'll comment on this whether we notice any sponginess when we go for a drive in a moment but yeah not the same quality that we've seen on more expensive pedals and I think that you know this is something that we're going to see throughout the review is they have you know reduced some costs in some areas the pressed metal being one of those things you know slightly lower quality master cylinder than we've seen on some other pedals as well same slave cylinders we've seen on others but you know there are some areas where they've cut some Cost, and I think that's absolutely fine as long as the overall driving experience is you know what it needs to be so I think that's enough on the brake pedal now let's set that aside 
and let's move across to our throttle pedal. So you can see here fundamentally a very similar design to our brake pedal. Same adjustments, 20 millimeters up and down front and rear for adjusting tilt and height. We've got the same bump stop design here as well, limiting travel should we wish to do so. We've got a up and down adjustment here as well through four different points as we mentioned before with the brake pedal. This time it's not a problem to adjust this and this allows us to go between a stiffer, more upright setting which is what we have here and a softer setting down the bottom as well. So again, this is gonna be a personal preference thing. You can play around with it to your heart's content to get the adjustment that you like. Now we can also adjust the amount of preload on this spring as well to fine tune to our personal preference beyond all the other adjustments that we've already covered. So just grab a six millimeter hex key here and we insert it into the head of the bolt and we turn it clockwise to decrease the amount of preload. And you can see as I decrease that, the spring almost becomes non-captive. You can see it's starting to rattle around a little bit there. Not quite though. So even at that minimum setting, it is still captive enough and it's not going to float around and come out of alignment or anything crazy like that. So they've obviously thought about that with the design. The design of these spring perches is sufficient to keep it captive at all times so it doesn't rattle around. And if we wind it outwards, you can see this whole assembly is now winding out and that is increasing the amount of tension or the amount of preload on that spring. Now, one thing we do need to pay attention to is we don't wanna wind this past 12 millimeters. So the gap must not exceed 12 millimeters. Now, the reason for that is if you unwind it too far, what happens is the thread comes out of this insert here and then you risk that coming loose over time and falling apart. And I have actually had that happen on the clutch of my HE Ultimate pedals once. I was about to start a race. It was actually right before one of the Porsche All-Stars races and the clutch just completely exploded on the floor around the sim rig. So definitely pay attention to that and don't wind it past 12 millimeters. And those with a keen eye might also notice the 3D printed spring perches here as well. And that keeps the spring aligned nicely as it pushes in and out so it doesn't slide up and down and lose its alignment. Now you can see there's a little bit of buckling that goes on in the middle here as we push the spring in. I don't see that as being a problem and it does have a nice progressive feel in the spring tension as we push down on the pedal as well. Now there's no hydraulic dampeners or anything like that here. Hydraulic dampeners on throttle pedals can be a little bit hit and miss. I've mentioned in some other review videos about how sometimes they can add a little bit of lift off delay or lift off hysteresis as I call it. So the pedal doesn't exactly match your foot as you lift off. And that can sometimes lead to a little bit less control of the throttle application inside your sim. So yeah, I don't have a problem with this design. It is basic, but it gets the job done. And I think, you know, it, it feels nice and smooth, at least in my hands. Again, we'll comment on it more when we go for a drive in just a minute. Now, one thing we do need to call out here, of course, is the electronics. This is using a Hall Effect sensor, so not a potentiometer and not a load cell. And that is a good choice in my book. Now, if we flip the pedal over, we can actually see how this works internally here. So you can see a little magnet sitting on the bottom of the pedal here. So as we push that in, the magnet moves closer or further away from the little plastic housing here. And inside there is a little metal plate and that is our Hall Effect sensor. So what happens is it actually measures the flow of electrons across that little metal plate and that varies depending on the strength of the magnetic field. So as we push the pedal closer, the magnetic field changes. That is measured as a change in the flow of electrons across the metal plate. And that is then outputted as a varying voltage, which again, just like with our pressure sensor in the brake pedal, is interpreted as throttle application inside the sim. So that's how that works. And the advantage of a Hall Effect sensor is that it's completely contact free. There's no moving parts. There's nothing there that it's gonna wear out over time. So good choice. And again, good to see that they're spending money in the areas that are important. Again, you can see that the housing here is 3D printed. So obviously they're saving some cost there. But I mean, you know, in the context of what we're looking at, here that's not a problem so you know i think that it's a smart choice overall provided that the experience once we go for a drive later on is good so just lastly here you can see the connector as well a nice metal connection with a keyed input as well so that plugs into our control module on the brake pedal that we looked at earlier and we've got a nice metal locking ring here as well to screw it into place. So there's no risk of that coming loose and falling out over time. So obviously they've thought about reliability there and that is a good thing to see as well. So set our throttle pedal aside and we'll have a quick look at the clutch as well. Again, pretty much exactly the same design here, a Hall Effect sensor once again, all the same adjustments as you can see with the bump stop as well as the height front and rear. A slight difference though, of course, as you can see for the design of how the spring mechanism works and that's to give us that kind of latching feeling in the clutch pedal and I can tell you, you know, just with my hand there, it is actually quite defined. Now I've commented before when it comes to clutch pedals, when you're kind of just slamming the pedal down when you're driving, you don't really notice that effect. Some people are gonna like it, some people won't really find it important. Personally, I don't find it particularly important, but just like what we have on our HE Ultimate pedals, you can see as we push in, 
the whole thing kind of tilts downwards and as it tilts down, the amount of spring resistance changes and that's what gives us that kind of two stage effect as we push down on the pedal. So again, we'll comment on that when we go for a drive, but you can see again, we've got those 3D printed spring perches, a slightly stiffer spring in this case. And exactly as we saw with the throttle before, we can take a six millimeter Allen key, go clockwise to reduce the preload. So we'll wind that all the way out and you'll see this one actually does become non-captive. So this is what we were talking about before. You can see if we wind that all the way in, this actually becomes loose and you can see the spring can then rattle around inside. So we don't need to wind out that far. And look, to be honest with you, I don't think most people are gonna feel the need to even make an adjustment with the clutch. It feels pretty good as it is already. But again, we don't wanna go past that 12 millimeter gap that we mentioned before with the throttle because we do risk the thing sort of falling apart if the thread comes outside the housing here. But we'll wind that back to about where it was before. And I think that will do. So I think that's pretty much everything we need to cover in terms of the hardware. Of course, if there is anything you'd like to know more about, do let us know in the comments down below. But let's get these set up on the rig now. We'll take you through the software and calibration and then get into some driving tests. So pedals are installed on the rig now. We ended up overcoming that little issue with the heads of the studs poking out a little bit just by installing some spaces underneath the platform. So between the profile on the P1X cockpit and the pedal plate, we just had a small, maybe three or four mil spacer. And that's enough to raise it up, just enough to overcome that issue. And yeah, pedal plate wise, I mean, I'm looking down at it now. I can't see any flex there whatsoever. I'm not feeling any flex either. Obviously your mileage may vary depending on what kind of rig you have it mounted to. We've got a pretty solid platform here already, but the plate itself, I don't anticipate there being any issues whatsoever with that. And as I said before, there's plenty of scope for adjustment from side to side, forward and back as well. So a good pedal plate overall. Would be nice to see those little uh, those little recesses in there just to make it a little bit easier to mount. But other than that, absolutely fine. And there is enough room there for my heels as well. I've seen some pedal plates before that are quite short and my heels kept slipping off the back of them, but no, this one gets the job done nicely. And yeah, look onto the pedals themselves. Initially, impressions they feel very smooth you will hear a little bit of a squeak there in the throttle pedal straight out of the box we'll uh, try and address that in just a moment with some PTFE lubricant very very nice smooth action there the amount of throw that we have there by um, by default on the maximum setting so 82 millimeters I think it was of throw it feels pretty much spot on for me I wouldn't want anything more than that I think anything less than that would start to feel a little bit restrictive for me as well and yeah there's no dead zone or slop in there whatsoever that's one thing I'm noticing straight away about all three pedals you can see if I kind of kick them from side to side as well only just a, you know, a little bit of flex there in the metal itself, as you would expect, but no dead zone, no slop or anything. And there's no kind of rattling or you know, any sort of funny noises other than just that little bit of squeaking, which you, know, you kind of expect with pedals. You do have to lubricate things from time to time. And it was exactly the same with my HE Ultimate pedals as well. So not something that I would say is a complaint about these, but again, just something to be aware of. You might need to lubricate them from time to time. Uh, yeah, look, otherwise the feeling of the pedals themselves, as I said before, the throttle, Really nice progressive spring rate as well. You do feel that kind of increase in spring pressure as you push your foot down, but when you lift off, there's absolutely no lag or hysteresis there at all. It, it springs immediately back under your foot, obviously not having a damper assist that, but it does have a nice smooth sort of feel to it as well. It doesn't have a lot of mechanical resistance behind it. Some people might prefer damper style pedals for that reason, but for me, you know, I'm perfectly happy with the throttle pedal clutch. It does have that kind of two stage feeling to it, probably more defined than I'm used to with other pedals that I've tested before. Again, it is adjustable. When I'm driving, I don't notice it. It's just kind of there. I just kind of push my foot in and it just goes. When you're pulling away from the lights or you know the, the start line, it is a little bit awkward to kind of feel exactly where the pressure point is, but it does feel quite similar to a real car in that you kind of have that first little stage there and then it kind of clunks from there on. So I'd say, yeah, it is quite a realistic feeling pedal. Whether or not you like that feeling or not is a purely subjective thing. For me, I could take it or leave it. You can of course adjust it to the point where it's really not a thing anyway, if you don't want to have that there. And then the brake, again, it's got a nice smooth action to it. No sideways play, no dead zone once again. And it does have a nice defined threshold point as well. You can see when I push my foot to about where I'd want my threshold to be for about 80% braking pressure is about there. And you can see that first initial metal springs compressing. We've got a little bit of squish in our rubber springs there as well. And then if we push harder, the elastomer springs starting to compress a little bit, but I mean, not a whole lot really at all. So plenty of movement there. I mean, it, it doesn't have a massive amount of travel in it. We could of course increase that with some adjustments, but 
To be honest with you, straight out of the box, this feels very, very similar to my SimTag pedals, which cost a lot more. So straight out of the box, good impressions so far. Let's get into software and calibration now. So there's a couple of tools that we can download. One of them is absolutely necessary for the primary calibration. The other is only really necessary if you're not happy with how the pedals have been calibrated from factory. The Leo Bodner board does come with a basic default calibration and they do set an additional calibration on top of that when these pedals leave the factory. So you shouldn't need to do this first step, but nonetheless, I'm just gonna show you quickly for the sake of completeness. So let's bring it up now. LC USB configuration tool. So this is a Leo Bodner piece of software downloadable from the main website and all the instructions are in the instruction manual for doing this as well. So I'm only gonna skim over this very quickly for you. By default, straight out of the box, you should see some numbers in here that have been preset by the BJ factory. If you do have to replace the board for any reason, these would default back to zero and you would need to calibrate these. But basically all we're doing here is pushing each pedal down to the maximum and adjusting the gain for each pedal until we get a full scale deflection here. So until it goes all the way to the top of the gauge. We can also set a calibration for our brake pedal if we're not happy with it by default as well, should we need to do so. But for me, the default calibration was absolutely fine. But again, all the details on the fine tuning are all in the manual and very clear and very easy to understand. So I don't really see the need to go into a massive amount of detail now. So let's close that guy off. And then let's open up DI View. Those of you who have used HE Ultimate pedals in the past will be familiar with this piece of software. So this is responsible for taking the raw data that comes in from the pedals themselves and assigning some filters to it to manipulate how that data is then interpreted by Windows. So it's basically assigning the values between 0% and 100%, which will be relayed into the sim. Now, iRacing in particular ignores these values, so you do have to set your own calibration in iRacing, and we'll go and do that in just a moment as well. But for everything else, pretty much, I think at least, DI view is what we need to do for further calibration. So we're gonna to go to edit, we're gonna to go to settings, we're gonna click on load cell interface, and that's gonna bring it in. And you can see all the various axes here. So we probably don't need all of them. We won't need all of them, but I'm not sure which three it's actually gonna assign yet. So we'll just do all of them. So we can see here we have our X rotation, which is our throttle, our Y rotation, which is our brake, and our Z rotation, which is, you guessed it, our clutch. And as you can see here, now we have two values. One is representing the raw data from the USB controller, and one is representing the adjusted data. Now, because we haven't done any calibration yet, they're both reading exactly the same. And you can see graphically here as well, we've got a red marker and a black marker, which are both going up in tandem together because we don't have any calibration. So we're gonna right click and click on calibration. And you can see now we have a minimum, a center and a maximum value. Now at the moment you can see with my throttle pedal completely lifted off, so no input whatsoever. We're getting a reading of somewhere between about 47,000 flat and about 47, 200. So we want to add a little bit of dead zone so we don't get that flickering coming through. So we're going to say 47,300 for our minimum. And then if we push the pedal all the way down to the maximum, we've got 65535. Remembering again that we do have that factory calibration, which is already setting our maximum point for us. So for those who might be wondering, the maximum value of 65,535 there does mean that the USB controller is a 16-bit resolution controller. Obviously, because we're operating between a range of 47,000 and 65,000, we're not taking full advantage of that full resolution there, but you know, it is what it is. So now we need to set our center value. So all we need to do for that is grab a calculator, type in our minimum, so 47,300 plus our maximum, so 65,535 equals, and then divide it by two. 56,417, we don't need to worry about the 0.5. And obviously, you know, don't copy my numbers, you need to do this for yourselves as well. 56,417, and we hit okay. So now, you can see on the left-hand side there, we've got a reading of zero when the pedal is completely released. I can rest my foot on it just a little bit before it gives us any reading. And as I push it all the way down to the maximum, we get a reading all the way to full scale deflection. So we've got a nice calibration there all the way from zero to 100%. We're gonna do exactly the same thing for the clutch now. So again, view raw data if we haven't already. Calibration, we've got 65,535 for our maximum and a little bit higher this time, so 48,400, let's say. So 48,400, and then we're gonna do the same calculation again. So 48,400 plus 65,535 equals divided by two, 56,967. So let's just say 57,000, that'll be fine. 
and we hit OK. And now you can see we have our clutch calibrated exactly the same. So remembering again, the red mark on the top is our raw data coming in. And the bottom one is the adjusted value, which is what the games will see via Windows. So now we need to do the same thing for our brake. A little bit more complicated here because this is going to be a personal preference, subjective style thing. So we're going to hit calibration. So this time we want to set our minimum value to match whatever we want the minimum to be, plus whatever dead zone we want to add in as well. So for me, I know I have a habit of resting my foot with a little bit of pressure on the brake. Not too much, but enough that it can apply a little bit of braking pressure without me realizing at times. So I'm going to just rest my foot on there a tiny bit and take the minimum number with a tiny little bit of pressure on there. So I'd say probably about 9,000 looking at that is going to be about right for me. And then for our maximum, we're going to push the pedal down to about the pressure that we would want for maximum deflection. So a little bit past where we want our threshold point to be. Remembering again that we do need to be able to modulate around that, given that our braking pressure is usually about 80% in the game, and we may need to push that further to 100% at times, obviously depending on the car. So that's about where I'd have my 80% pressure point, and then pushing a little bit further than that. About 32,000 I think is going to be right for me. So we're going to go max 32,000. And then again, we're going to do exactly the same thing. So we're going to go 9,000 plus 32,000 equals divided by two equals 20,500. So 20,500. Okay. And now we can see we've got a little bit of dead zone there. I can rest my foot on the brake a little bit without it doing anything. May end up adding a little bit more dead zone later on, but we'll see how we go. And then as I push my foot all the way to the maximum, we're getting that good maximum reading there. And you can see again up the top, the red is indicating our raw data and the black down the bottom is indicating our adjusted data. And it is as simple as that. So we can now close down DI view and let's get in and do some driving. Okay, so we're in iRacing in a Porsche 911 GT3 Cup car, one of the most difficult cars to brake in, so it's always the car that I like to use for testing braking and pedal systems. Uh, around Imola as well, which is a track that I'm pretty familiar with, one that we've used for a bit of pedal testing in the past as well. So let's head out here now, see if I can get the hang of this clutch straight off the bat. Normally I use a dual clutch, or a two-stage clutch, I should say, for this car, but we'll just quickly try and launch it there. Managed to not stall, that's a good thing, but we'll look at the clutch Properly later on, we'll do some heel and toe driving as well in a Soto Corsa in just a bit. But let's focus on just the standard sort of left, left foot braking and right foot throttle for now. So the immediate impression is straight out of the box and I haven't made any adjustments really at all from what we had just straight out of the box. Very, very similar to where I ended up landing with my sim tag pedals after, you know, quite a few months of fine tuning and tweaking. So obviously, either I have very similar taste to what the uh, engineers do that develop these, or I just got very lucky. But either way, it certainly doesn't feel like a steep learning curve at all. And again, remembering that these pedals cost way, 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 way less than those pedals do. I have to say, immediately out of the box, the experience is very, very, very similar. I'm not really struggling at all to modulate my braking. I can feel what's going on through the rear of the car, and obviously they aren't force feedback pedals, but when I'm getting the feedback cues through the steering and everything else at the back of the car is locking up a little bit and moving around like just then, I'm able to modulate my braking inputs around that quite comfortably and it's really not causing me any issues at all. So I can see myself being just as fast with these as with any other pedals really. Whoops, still cold tyres. Get the power down now. But the brake is very, very smooth. One of the things I commented on with the um, race work pedals was just how smooth they are. And I'd say the brake on this is one step even further in many ways. You can see there again, I locked up a little bit. I put a little bit too much pressure in, but I was able to sense it and then back off just a little bit and still make the turn. And if you think back to 
the reviews that we did recently of some of the more entry level pedals using potentiometers for the brake, that was the thing that I was really struggling with is as soon as you start to lock up, you just miss the turn entirely. So try to pick up the pace a little bit now. But yeah, very, very smooth. And that goes for the throttle pedal as well. We did apply some PTFE lubricant to the, um, to the throttle pedal. And that has taken care of the squeaking, for, at least for now. We'll obviously follow up with you guys later on and let you know whether there are any ongoing issues with squeaking. But it, again, it was something that we had to deal with quite often with our HE Ultimates. So we kind of expect that it will be a thing, but we'll see. But yeah, throttle feels really smooth as well. Just the right amount of travel. I do prefer the maximum setting. So I wouldn't want to have the travel any less than this, but I certainly don't feel like I want it to go any further than this either. So a good amount of travel there. Very smooth on the throttle as well. And again, no issues with lift off lag or anything like that. You can see there where I locked up on the previous lap, but was able to get out of it. Couldn't quite make that one at full tilt. But yeah, look, I mean, honestly, like I don't, I don't feel like I'm using different pedals, which that's the first time I can honestly say that. Like, I mean, most hydraulic pedals are quite close in performance, but there's little nuances that you can tell, you know, just little things that you notice between them. But like, if you, if I close my eyes, I would just think that I was driving with my normal SimTag pedals. It really, the brake and the throttle feel very, very close. But the other advantage of these as well is that they are quite quiet too. So. One of the things that I have commented on with other pedal sets as well is, you know, metal, metal contact. Just little things like that when you're using race car parts in the context of a sim. Those little noises that aren't a problem in a race car can become a problem in a sim because, you know, you're trying to keep the noise down for neighbours and people in other rooms nearby, sleeping kids, things like that. But these are very, very quiet. I can't hear them at all over my headphones and I don't have the volume high at all. This is coming into lap four, so I feel like I'm kind of familiar now. 148.7, that's pretty decent. Yeah, the throttle's really easy to modulate as well because it's so smooth. There's no binding or anything like that at all. Another little tail slide there, but we kept it together. So yeah, my muscle memory isn't quite adapting across. I can feel just, I'm not quite as confident with my maximum braking pressure for 80% pressure in the game. So my threshold point is just slightly different, but that's just an adjustment thing. I could adjust it to be exactly the same, or I could just reset my muscle memory to this. But another thing, now that I'm sort of starting to unpack my thoughts a little bit more is some hydraulic brake pedals do have a tendency to have a little bit of a binding effect in them. Like it's, it's kind of like, you know, even in a real race car, you can kind of feel a bit of texture there. And sometimes they feel like they not lock up, but it can have a little bit of minor variance in how the pedal feels just on that initial press as the fluids kind of initially starting to pressurize. And what I'm finding with these is that they're so consistent and so smooth. 
One thing I would say is that they're so smooth almost that you're kind of almost missing that slight texture of, you know, the fact that they are hydraulic pedals. It's, it'd be interesting to actually get my hands on a set of the, um, the non-hydraulic versions and see how close they actually feel in the real world because they are, you know, 40% cheaper than these are. They're only a thousand, around a thousand dollars Australian, whereas these are 1750. And, you know, these are so smooth because they don't quite have that texture feeling that you get in some other hydraulic pedals. It's hard to sort of say, and I'm trying to cast my mind back to how I felt driving with the sim, uh, so what am I saying? The um, Houstonville Ultimates, but now that I kind of think about it a bit more, even though these do feel very similar to my sim tags in terms of the thresholds and everything like that, and how you actually drive with them, They also feel very, very similar to the Husingville Ultimates as well. So just goes to show like there really is like, there's not a massive amount of variance between, you know, once you get into the super high end pedal range, you know, that extra sort of five, 10% maybe is really where the money is. And I really feel like with these pedals, you know, even though we do, we can see where they've cut some, you know, not necessarily cut corners, but where they've reduced costs in materials and machining and things like that. When it comes to the actual driving experience, these are very, very, very good. So I think what we'll do now is I'll, um, I'll spend a bit more time with them, familiarize myself over the next day or so. And then we'll come back and we'll sort of summarize my thoughts a little bit more in the final conclusions. But what I wanna do now is jump into Assetto Corsa, do some heel toe driving. Let you know how I get on with the clutch as well. And then, yeah, we can summarize my impressions for a longer period of time in the final thoughts. Okay, so I set a course and now Ferrari F40 on Nordschleife. We'll go for a bit of a cruise here and I'll give you my impressions. I'm not a expert heel and toe driver by my own admission, but nonetheless, I should be able to give you a good idea of what you can expect from the experience with these pedals, I think. so. We'll include it anyway. Chuck it into second. So, one thing that I commented on before was just the general smoothness of the pedals and how, you know, when you're kind of just slamming away at the clutch, you don't really notice that second stage of movement. And that's very much the case here, even just when I'm shifting right now, it's just a stab. You, you really don't notice that. So, although I think it's good that it's there, for the people that do sort of, you know, value it. It's not something that I'm really noticing when I'm driving. But again, it's just, it's just that general smoothness. And I know I keep on harping on about it, but it just makes everything work so well. Bring it around. Now we did talk a little bit before about the slightly sharp edges on the pedals as well. I don't know whether it's gonna be cutting into my boot, but it's not feeling like it's grabbing or anything. And obviously that's gonna depend on your exact technique too. I don't think that I'd be comfortable doing it with bare feet or with socks, but I mean, most people that are running hydro pedals aren't gonna be using socks or bare feet anyway, I wouldn't imagine. So I don't really see that being a major problem. But I think if I was if I was installing these on my rig long term, and I think when Tom installs them on his rig, he probably will end up filing those pads down just on the edges, just to sort of smoothen them off. That's, I think that's probably my main complaint about these pedals is although I appreciate what they're trying to do, whoops, appreciate what they're trying to do with saving costs and using press designs or press metal rather than, um, rather than machined or billet. That's, um, that's definitely one thing I think stands out as needing improvement. But I mean, that's something that's easy to fix and it certainly doesn't take away from the overall feeling of the pedals. So we won't be too harsh on them there, but. Yep, 
one thing I'm really appreciating, particularly with heel toe, is that there's no lateral movement in the pedals at all. So what I mean by that is when I, when I sort of push it from the side, I'm pushing it to the right hand side with my foot and I'm not feeling a ton of flex or anything like that, which is really good. Okay, so conclusions on the BJ Sim Racing Hydraulic GT pedals. Now, I think that this has honestly been a little bit of a reset for me because obviously we're very spoiled with a lot of very, very high-end sim racing gear here at Booster Media. We get to get our hands on a lot of cool things. And, you know, I think sometimes it's easy to kind of slip into the, I guess, trap of taking some of the quality that we get our hands on for granted. And, you know, I, I wasn't as excited to review these pedals as I have been about some other products, simply because I knew that there were some compromises made. But look, when I got my hands on them and kind of saw that, you know, they've obviously put a lot of thought into the way they've constructed these, even though we can see where they've cut costs, the areas where they've cut costs don't really have an impact on the overall driving experience. And I'd go as far as to say that these are actually some of the better feeling pedals that I've driven with. All the little things like, you know, not having any lateral movement, not having any slop or dead zone, just little things like that, those little attention to detail, you know, even though the quality might not be there when compared to something much more expensive, the driving experience certainly is. So, you know, there is a lot of subjective things when it comes to, when it comes to pedals and, you know, we can't avoid that, but we do have plenty of adjustment here as well. And I think that, you know, regardless of your driving style, the kind of driving that you're gonna be doing or just your personal preference, you will be able to dial these in to suit your needs. And look, I think the best way I can probably summarize it is if these were the only pedals that I had here in Booster Media, I'd more than happily have them on my rig and drive with them every day without an issue. Now, obviously we do need to do some more long-term testing. We have put a good couple of days of usage into these and I'm happy to report other than the slight squeaking that we had in the throttle pedal, there hasn't been any issues at all. Uh, even just down to things like the hydraulic slave cylinder, even though that is the same slave that we've seen weeping on multiple other sets of pedals that we've tested here. Um, you know, I can assume that at some point it probably will start weeping because it is the same design. But, you know, as it stands right now, we haven't had any problems with leakage whatsoever. And one thing that I did notice is that elastomer spring that's sitting right up against the slave cylinder actually has a slight bead of grease underneath it. It's not hydraulic fluid, it's something that's been put there intentionally. So I don't know whether that's maybe just enough to stop that little bit of weeping of brake fluid that we've seen on other sets. But either way, as, as it stands right now, after a couple of days of usage, we haven't had any problems whatsoever. So we're gonna actually put these on Tom's sim rig, let him drive with these. He's gonna be using these as an upgrade from his SRP Pro pedals that he's been running for for about four months now. So we'll put them through their paces long-term on his rig, see what his impressions are long-term as well. And another thing that I really wanna try and do is get my hands on the non-hydraulic version of the brake pedal as well to see just how much difference there is between a $1,049 set Australian, which is the non-hydraulic version, and the $1,749 version with the hydraulic cylinder. So really the only two complaints that I have is I would like to see those little recesses that we talked about on the pedal plate just to countersink those screws to make them a little bit easier to mount but really not a big deal you can just use spacers as we showed on our p1x cockpit but the major one is just the sharpness of the metal on the sides of these pedal pads i think that that's something that could relatively easily be rectified and hopefully that is something that they address whether they move to cnc machining just for these particular parts or have somebody maybe manually file them maybe they can set up some sort of a machining process that will just smooth these off but you know look with with boots on it really wasn't a problem and you know with my particular driving style i didn't find that it did actually cut into my boots which i thought might be a problem but with bare feet or socks on definitely a much different experience and you know while you could left foot brake no problem with socks on which did actually surprise me heel and towing was pretty much out of the question at least for me i did find that when i rolled my foot across this was quite a sharp edge here and would definitely cut into my foot or of course blisters and things like that over time so definitely something that you're going to want to rectify if you do buy these pedals and intend to drive them with socks or bare feet but again it's easy enough to just file that down yourself if it is a problem it's certainly not a, uh, a deal breaker so to speak but just something that I thought was important to point out. But otherwise, look, you know, the construction and build quality overall is good. It's not the best we've seen, but again, the price point is a lot lower than what we've seen as well. So I think, you know, considering the price point, they are very good. Obviously, they're still not a cheap set of pedals. And if, you know, making some compromises on materials and, you know, the fact that we've got some 3D printed stuff here, you know, bits and pieces like that, you know, they're not the prettiest pedals to look at in the world. And obviously there will be some people out there that want to have that beauty quality and that kind of wow factor to go along with the price tag. 
But I think that if you're really just after bang for buck when it comes to the overall driving experience, then these are definitely amongst the best that I've tested in that regard. And look, I honestly, at this point, at least see absolutely no reason to not recommend these. We'll do some long-term testing on Tom's rig, as we said, and let you know if we do run into any issues. But yeah, really impressed with the experience overall. And as I said, at the start of the review process, I wasn't super excited about reviewing these simply because of those compromises, but I've come around at the end. And I think, as I said before, what it ultimately boils down to is if these were the only pedals that I had, I would be more than happy to run them every day on my daily driver rig and I wouldn't think twice about it. I think they're absolutely fantastic. So I really hope that helps you guys out. If you do have any further questions or comments, let us know down in the comments section down below and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. And if you do decide that you want to pick a set of these up for yourself, there are some links down in the description below. The Pagnian links that are there are affiliate links as well. So a small commission from those sales comes through to helping out keeping this channel running. So thank you very much for the support there. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon. Bye.